I think the university clock tower has a really significant part of the University of Auckland's history. The university was short of accommodation after World War I and convinced the government to fund a new arts building. Around about 1920-1921, the international competition was held. The winning entry was submitted by an American architect, Roy Alston Lippincott. He was picking up on what was the cutting edge of architecture in the early part of the 20th century, a movement known as Art Nouveau, which had its origins in the arts and crafts movement. There were significant objections to the selection of that particular competition entry. Uh, a, because it was American, but B, because the style of the building was not recognisable to many of the critics who were expecting either a neoclassical building or a neo-Gothic building. But of course, what's interesting is that despite the controversy at that point in time, the jury that picked it was obviously significantly enlightened to have chosen a building out of all the others that was at the cutting edge of architecture in the 1920s. So we have Mount Summers stone on the exterior of the building and Omaru stone internally. The tower is actually precoce concrete work and very, very early example of concrete being used in that particular kind of work. What's significant about Art Nouveau is that rather than making reference to classical sources of ornamentation, the references are all to nature. So we can zoom in on lots of really interesting details about the building and see aspects of local New Zealand flora and fauna. The, the ponga frond that you can see around various parts of the building, seed pods from flax bushes and also the kia and kaka that adorn what's called the bosses, the decorative detail at the bottom of arches. The floor itself is really a, a world-class example of mosaic work that picks up on the color, colorations of nature, greens, blue hues, and of course the patterning itself uh, completely eschews any reference to neoclassical uh, references, but picks up on natural forms and vines and leaves and things like that. The staircase also is interesting, and the balustrades on the staircase, which whilst made out of steel, uh, mild steel, nevertheless pick up on decorative elements such as flowers, uh, stylized flowers, um, being worked into the balustrade. I really like the, the great big central space underneath the tower and it gets used in a variety of ways at particular times of year. So the annual Christmas tree is an important part of that. A great huge tree that really fills the space and gives it that sense of celebration at that time of year when students are certainly throwing their hands up in joy for having come to the end of their exams. They incorporated shields on the exterior of the building and the idea was to then reproduce the shields of universities with which the University of Auckland had external relations. Only two appear to have been completed, the rest are blank, waiting to be, uh, have crests put onto them. The two that exist is the University of Cambridge and the University of Dublin at the other end, which were clearly very early associations that this university had with overseas universities. The clock tower today houses a variety of administrative functions and facilities, so student administration, the exams office, um, meeting rooms for academics. So its use has changed a lot over the time and that's happened incrementally as each department has moved out and into new accommodation. And of course it has endured through to the present day to remain what is a world-class example of Art Nouveau architecture.